great to have all of you here and uh, we're going to talk about uh, uh, a really exciting phase that is uh, starting to unveil its, uh, itself now in India. Uh, the whole revolution that's happening around financial services and uh, the fintech sector. And a lot of this is on the back of the uh, unique ID uh, platform known as Aadhaar. How many of you are from India? How many of you have an Aadhaar number? Okay, not bad. Uh, all of you who don't have one, please get one because it's going to be the foundation for everything that we do in India moving forward. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about uh, Aadhaar specifically and, the, and the, the whole stack that is emerging. Just take about five minutes and then request each of my panelists to talk about you know, what they're doing and uh, how they see. You know, we've got a really interesting combination. Puneet from... Uh, Evendus is from the, uh, you know, uh, is an investment banker and, you know, helps companies raise capital, I'm hoping, uh, to do a lot of business with him. Uh, Bobby is the CEO of a fintech startup in India, EasyTap, and, and uh, we'll talk about uh, the lay of the land and, you know, what's real and what's not. And uh, Navneet, will, uh, who's also had a lot of India experience from his days at Google and, and now is back in the Valley, uh, can talk about you know what he's seeing here that is relevant in India, what he thinks India may be poised for leapfrog rather than uh, you know just implementing what's already worked here. So I'm going to take five minutes and talk about uh, this whole thing uh, that we call India Stack. If I can find my clicker that I put in some pocket. So uh, there's this phenomenon that we are calling India Stack, which is not really a formal product or anything, but it is the result of a lot of work that's been done mostly on a volunteer basis. Uh, and um, it's really trying to bring India into, the, uh, into a very modern platform from a technology perspective for delivery of services in an efficient manner. And uh, if you think about, you know, if Graham Bell came back, uh, sorry, if Edison came back from the dead today, he would probably recognize the um, power generation system because not much has fundamentally changed in that industry. And likewise, if Graham Bell had come back 20 years ago, he would have probably recognized the phone system. But if he came back today, he would have no idea what this gadget is in all our hands. Uh, and it's not just about the gadget, it's the fact that everything got opened up so that this, the telecom operators themselves did not control things anymore, and it was open uh, to innovation at all levels. And that's kind of the philosophy behind which uh, we in India have been looking at you know, the stack. If you think about a company like Uber today, it only exists because of a variety of things that have come up. Uh, mostly initially from the government uh, and are in the public domain, the mo most recent one being GPS, which was the sort of the last, one of the last acts of the Clinton administration. But subsequently, all the layers that, you know, a service like Uber uses or Airbnb uses are from the private sector, right? Whether it's Google Maps, whether it is Android or iOS, or whether it is the payment uh, networks with Visa, MasterCard, and now Apple Pay, and, uh, and so on. Uh, and in India, we felt that we would like to really facilitate a lot of innovation by having a foundation which is of, of very strong identity. Uh, if you think about all these services, you know, there is an element of identity that is the core to the delivery of these services. And in India, we felt that we wanted to open up a platform that was only identity that was run by the government, uh, which is called Aadhaar. Uh, that is uniform, that is delivered to all uh, residents of the country. It's not something for citizens, it's for residents of India. But it allowed innovation at all levels. So whatever connects into Aadhaar for identity authentication, whether it is biometrics, whether it is, uh, you know, built-in cell phones with biometric scanners, which is, or, uh, you know, secure uh, OTP-based authentication, all of that is opened up on the one side, and applications built on top are also opened up through extensive APIs, right? So it's a very minimal architecture that we put in for identity authentication, and we've opened it up to the ecosystem to build applications on top of. And as a result, what we have evolved to is a complete stack of, uh, of APIs um, which will do a variety of, uh, of components, or will offer a variety of components for service providers to be able to build applications on top of. So Aadhaar provides the identity authentication. It says I'm Sanjay Swami. It makes no other representations about me. Uh, in fact, I, I contend that a driver's license that everybody here in the US uses as an identity isn't an identity document. 
a driver's license does not say I'm Sanjay. It says Sanjay is allowed to drive a car. So it's actually an entitlement given to me by virtue of my having passed a test. Um, so Aadhaar is one where it is only about identity. And then we said, you know, if we want to offer a variety of services to bring people either into the financial system for, you know, opening a bank account, for uh, applying for a loan, uh, for repayment of the loan, for doing transactions electronically, what is the stack that's going to be needed? And built out these in the form of APIs and specifications. So the first thing, of course, is identity authentication. The second is the ability to open an account with, you know, know your customers. So I should be able to go anywhere in the country, type in my 12-digit Aadhaar number, uh, put a fingerprint or my iris scan, and authorize, based on successful authentication, the release of my fun I mean, the basic pieces of data to a service provider. And that's called electronic KYC, which makes that completely paperless, makes it completely uh, robust and available to everyone. Uh, we also have uh, a, ca a cashless layer, so we just launched a unified payment interface, which allows for real-time payments interbank, uh, and it's probably the first country to implement this at scale. And all this is live, by the way, right? Um, and then the other thing we said is we need to have a consent layer for people to be able to decide whether their information can be shared by party A to party B. Uh, so if my phone bill has to be shared with the bank because I've applied for a loan, I should be able to specify that I'm allowing Airtel to share my phone bill with HDFC Bank, and for purposes of that loan, I should have the right to revoke that, uh, that privilege. So all of this, which used to be a very manual, paper-based process, is going completely digital and electronic. Uh, I will be able to sign documents digitally just by you know, entering an OTP on my cell phone. I will be able to save all these documents in the Dropbox like digital locker and be able to share them with parties along with the consent that I define. Right? So these are the building blocks that are out there that are you know, being implemented and rolled out. And what we believe is going to happen is India is going to move from a very data poor economy to a super rich you know, economy when it comes to data. And I think these gentlemen here and I would like to talk a little bit about how, you know, assuming all this starts happening, uh, the world is going to change and, you know, you could conceivably apply for a loan on your cell phone and be awarded the loan and disburse the money instantaneously. Uh, and, and by the way, there are a lot of live pilots going out. Uh, the security and the SEBI, which is the um, board for, you know, securities and uh, investments is already doing a pilot allowing people to invest in mutual funds up to 50,000 rupees. Uh, merely by entering an OTP on their cell phone, completely self-service, right? So this is all not slideware or vaporware or APIware. This is all real stuff, things are happening. And, um, you know, I'd love to share with you some of the experiences. So this is what I normally present in 45 minutes, condensed, you know, severely. So apologize if some of this is not uh, obviously clear. But the stack that we are implementing here in India is really going to be, you know, very, very transformative. And we sort of would like to claim that while the Silicon Valley, you know, invented for the first billion people on the planet, uh, what we're implementing here will probably be the innovation platform for the next six billion. So with that, I'd like to, uh, you know, turn it over and uh, introduce my panelists, uh, Navneet, Bobby, and uh, Puneet. Uh, Navneet's uh, very recently turned entrepreneur again and has a lot of experience in the payments industry. Bobby is the CEO of a startup in India called EasyTap, which is in the payment space, and Puneet. So I'd like to start with Puneet and request you to uh, introduce yourselves, uh, all three of you, and then get back to you with some uh, comments from your side. Thank you, Sanjay. Uh, pleasure to be here. Um, I'm a kind of long-term Tycon and Thai member, so it's always a pleasure to come back here. Very quickly, um, uh, I head up the U.S. business as well as co-head the technology business of investment bank I'm part of called Avendis Capital. Uh, we are one of the largest technology practices and one of the largest banks overall uh, in India and uh, technology practices. Close. Can you hear me? Yeah. Better. No? Can you just give him the other mic, Bobby? Hello? Yeah. Better. Now it's working. Okay. Is it better? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, guys. So uh, I was talking about Avendis Capital. We are one of the largest uh, investment banks uh, out of India and one of the largest 
technology practices globally. We have 30 bankers focused on various types of technology. Um, and our technology, um, among the practices that we do, uh, and I'll keep it very short, we have a wealth management practice, we have a, our own PE fund, we, have, we are just starting a debt uh, uh, practice which is focused on entrepreneurs, and our main business, the starting business was investment banking. We raise capital and help companies buy and sell. And just briefly, um, in relation to the topic for today, uh, our technology banking is in two parts. One is technology services, and second is a digital technology. So um, uh, this topic is relevant to the half of our practice is digital technology. And di in digital technology, we have been fortunate enough to be at the right place at the right time. So right now, we are by far the leader in India. Um, we did 28 transactions in digital technology space, including fintech, in the last two years, which is more than all other banks combined. And our next competitor is Morgan Stanley with three transactions in that period. So in digital media and technology, we are by far the biggest player. And we have been fortunate to see many great companies, including Bobby, like yours. Um, so we'll love to talk about it today. Uh, just some numbers about us so that you can, you, know, you can put it. We, in digital technology, we have raised about $2 billion in the last two years uh, for our companies. And as I said, we have done 28 transactions. Our largest transaction would be about $250 million. Our smallest would be about $20 odd million. So that's the kind of uh, uh, space we are in. Thank you. Over to you, Bobby. Uh, my name is uh, Abhijit Thorbabi Bose. I'm the CEO and co-founder of a mobile payments company called EasyTap. Uh, EasyTap, any business that uses a mobile application or quite frankly any application to transact with their customers, we enable them to complete their payments or quite frankly any other type of financial transaction they want. Um, this includes things like Square-like services here in the US. We made the first made in India credit card terminal that connects to a phone. Um, we can allow any merchant to take a wallet payment. If a consumer walks into their shop and wants to pay with one of the many wallets that are expanding in India, they can do that through us. Uh, we can also do ATM transactions. In rural uh, cases and in financial inclusion cases, people come into our merchants. They can use the system and solution and device to withdraw cash. And we can also use this for uh, financial inclusion in terms of allowing people to deposit money to, uh, to save up in different types of schemes. So those are the use cases of how um, EasyTap works with our customers. We started the company five years ago. Um, we launched three years ago, and in the last three years, we now process $2 million a day, three quarters of a billion annualized. We were responsible for one third of the terminals deployed in India last year. Um, and so that's us. You guys can hear me? How about now, guys? Yeah, great. So I'm Navneet Singh. Always fun to be here at Tycon. I've been uh, speaking here for a few years now. Um, so pleasure to be here. Um, like Sanjay said, until very, very recently, I was SVP product at Vantive, which is the second largest payments acquirer in the US. Uh, payments acquirer is essentially a financial institution that works with the merchants, underwrites the merchants, and processes payments for, for, for merchants. And um, before that, the last five years, I've had um, two, I've been with two payments slash commerce startups. One ended up in an acquisition, the other one in a merger. And, uh, it, you know, like, like Sanjay was mentioning, my most recent and most direct India connection has been uh, the six years I spent with, uh, uh, with Google Bangalore uh, leading uh, mobile and, uh, and ads uh, product. In, um, in India as well as here in Mountain View. And so that was from 2006 to 2011. You know, and I'll tell you, I've, I've kept in close touch with India, and I've, I've been tracking since I came back here in 2011. Um, but uh, you know, one thing I can say very confidently is that India, and especially FinTech, is in a drastically different place than it was in 2011. It's just a whole new country. Um, and, but you know, what's really fun for me is to, uh, you know, given that I have the India context as well as the US payment space, to draw comparisons and see how India, you know, which we call a, you know, an immature uh, financial infrastructure in some ways, is, is learning from, and in a lot of cases, like Sanjay was mentioning, leapfrogging the US. Um, so that's me. Thanks, guys. You know, we're redefining what 60 seconds uh, 
uh, is uh, today. <laughs> We're also redefining what 130 is today. So, um, you know, I, and since I'm the moderator, I get to shake things up, and all the questions I told you I was going to ask, I can ask different questions. Um, but let me turn it over to anybody in the audience who's got any questions. Please, just take the mic there. Hi, uh, my name is Priyank. Um, I'm doing a fintech in the US, actually. Uh, it's for immigrants. Uh, I want to do something back in India. My business model is going to extend there. One thing which has scared me a lot in India is regulation, how it changed. Like P2P lending is not regulated at all. And I don't have any sense like how things are changing uh, from government side and uh, how you guys think being in India like you know, is going to affect uh, to these companies okay. who are doing P2P lending and all. Got it. Yeah, so uh, I'll just quickly take that one and then come back to uh, my colleagues to, uh, to add anything they have to on this. Uh, I think actually in India we have, you know, probably the best central bank regulator in the world right now uh, and a very forward thinking uh, com country, right? So we issued probably 23 banking licenses in the last six months as opposed to 14 in the first 60 years after independence. So uh, there's a lot moving in the right direction there. Uh, P2P lending is, you know, yes, going to be regulated, but if you see the first draft, it's a very, very loose regulation. They're only concerned about protecting the consumer. Um, and I think, you know, the, the regulator is one of the, f the most forward-thinking regulators in the country. They act very fast and they are very decisive. Um, so you don't have this sort of gray area and you don't, with like, you know, where you don't know uh, where you stand. So that's, that's a plus. The downside is, yes, it's going to be regulated, which is not true in other parts of the world. Uh, but it's a great place to do business. It will not be exactly what you're doing in the US, but you know, there will be great opportunities there. Okay. Any, Bobby, did you want to add anything to that? Well, I, I would just add two points. So one, I kind of echo Sanjay's point about the regulator. Um, among everything that we've seen, RBI is unbelievable, and the people at the head of RBI are fantastic. So that's good. The second thing uh, to, to add on to what Sanjay said, there's an explosion of data. So whatever lending you do, whether it's SME lending or consumer lending, uh, or even P2P lending in that sense, the amount, the entire system is inefficient. If you look at our partners, we work with State Bank of India, we have the exclusive contract with them or HTFC. The type of data that is available for lending decisions versus what's actually organically being generated is night and day. And it's being done at a scale that's never been seen before. So this is a wonderful opportunity to be doing things like that. Um, Puneet, um, you know, you talked earlier about some of the work you all are doing at Avendus. And clearly, you know, startups here, you know, wanting to expand to India or people want to come back and do startups in India. I run an early stage, seed stage fund. Uh, but, you know, you guys are doing some of the larger fundraisers as well for later stage companies. Can you talk uh, for a minute or two on, you know, some of the things that you're seeing there? Uh, Sanjay, if I may, I'll just uh, set the stage for with a couple of data points. And I'll just keep it very, Sanjay, as you requested, very factual. Because, you know, there's enough places to read about the policy strategy. There are very big experts here. But let me just tell you a few things which we are seeing from bottom-up perspective, right? And some of the data, Bobby, confirm if, if my guys have given me the right data. Is that right now, about half a billion dollars of transaction uh, are happening through various kind of digital and financial technology in a built manner in India. And that's likely to grow, I'm coming to the opportunity point, that's likely to grow to about 1.3 trillion in next five years. So the opportunity is really, really huge. And the opportunity is also huge due to the degree of lack of penetration. So while these numbers look big, overall Indian consumers spend, and payment being a big part, so I'll talk about it, I'll touch upon some other items too, about $1.3 trillion, uh, trillion dollars of uh, payment. And they, that looks larger compared to GDP because it includes ATM transactions. Only 40% of those are through some kind of technological means. And out of that 40%, 80% is ATM. So if you take that out, there's a, about $80 billion of transactions which are fully digitized today. So the opportunity is huge. And the government is very, very big uh, due to various reasons, including consumer protection, including efficiency, including evasion of uh, or removal of black money. So the opportunity is really, really great. And if I look at the, like I talked about uh, 28 uh, transactions we have done in digital space, out of that between 8 and 10 are in the fintech space. Um, the other indicator that we see from bottom up of the interest and the credibility of the space is type of investors. So uh, some of the investors I can quickly look at. 
uh, are just there are so many that I have to write it down. General Atlantic, Temasek, Excel, MX Ventures, American Express Ventures, Alibaba, Tiger Global, Matrix, uh, Naspers, which is a South African company, Blackstone, TPG, um, Cisco Ventures, Sequoia. So these kind of investors, when they are backing a space, you can imagine the opportunity is great. So if you look at it from that perspective, it seems like the stars are perfectly aligned. Execution is never easy, as Bobby will tell you. But the opportunity is really, really huge and here. It's not like a futuristic opportunity. So we are very, very bullish on this space. Great. Uh, Namneet, you know, you've been uh, an entrepreneur here. You've, been, you've worked at big companies here. You've seen uh, India at close. You've seen financial services here in the US. Uh, what do you see as you know, areas where uh, India was ahead of the game? What do you see as areas where you know, India is going to follow what the US has done? And what do you see that India is doing like, completely differently that uh, is probably going to be a trend setting for the rest of the world? Thanks. Uh, Sanjay, you know, like I mentioned earlier, what we call India's immature financial infrastructure is actually a blessing in disguise, right? And uh, I'll give you a couple of concrete examples. One on the merchant side, which I've been very closely involved with. So on the merchant side in payments, you've got legacy hardware, which is bulky POS systems. You've got standalone credit card terminals, antiquated credit card terminals that have been in the US for decades. And that's become a huge liability in the US as, as US tries to move to the EMV, the, the chip, card, chip card world, NFC, mobile payments. And India has a luxury to start with the greenfield and uh, you know, just introduce from the get-go sleek ne next-gen devices like you know, uh, my friend's uh, EasyTap does. And um, <clears throat> you know, just they're out of the box EMV, NFC, mobile payments enabled. Yeah. Not only that, they're 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 a platform for for business apps. So you know, that's that's somewhere that India can just leapfrog, right? Learn from the U.S. mistakes and just leapfrog. Even on the consumer side, on the consumer side, what we have in America is what I would call a plastic legacy. You know, you've got ubiquitous credit cards. In India, you don't have that, which means that mobile payments, which in my mind are a much more secure and seamless form of payments is, is being adopted from the get-go, be it you know, wallets like Paytm and MobiQuick, or Apple Pay, Google Pay, Samsung Pay. So um, you know, uh, there's, there's areas India is learning from the US, like earlier we were talking about P2P lending. You know, now that India has that mainstream consumer identity and credit scores uh, you know, with innovative risk models, they can learn from the US, learn from the lending clubs, and the, you, know, uh, you have startups there. Or in most cases, just leapfrog the US and do the, do the right thing from the get-go. Great. Uh, Bobby, you, we've talked about some of the work you're doing with the petroleum companies in India. Can you talk a little bit about to give people a flavor for some of the things that are fundamentally going to be different there? Um, yeah, so I, I think to add on what Navneet uh, said, yeah. Um, I think we have the best of both worlds if you're an Indian company, which in the sense that uh, we get to leverage the technology advances that we've seen in the US. So look, you've got an APIization and a web service layer that's coming online that's never been seen before. So the entire world is changing in that sense. You've got mobile platforms at scale. So you can actually leverage technology in a way that's very Bay Area centric in thinking and scale and impact which was never the case actually in India. Sanjay and I have been in India trying to do this for 11 plus years. Uh, it, seven, eight years ago when we both did our first startups, it was the wrong time, now is the right time. So the technology can come in and kind of do with the type of advances Navneet was saying. At the same time, there's a massive barrier to entry. Um, you know, we've been compared with companies here in the US. There's no way those companies would survive and scale in India because the use cases are very, very different. So some of the things Sanjay was referring to, you know, uh, we just, um, we work with the largest petroleum, petroleum and LPG companies in the country. So uh, for context, the entire Aadhaar initiative, the ROI that Nanda Nilakani presented to the Prime Minister was based on streamlining the distribution of cooking oil, cooking gas, excuse me, to households. That single use case, these cylinders are huge bulky cylinders that go to everybody's house and you pay cash. The amount of inefficiency in that system if you could automate it and make sure that everything was done cleanly, it would justify the entire other project, which is the largest technology project in the world. Yep. So um, how does that work? 
it, you actually have to take the technology and then understand that there's a delivery boy who's with a mobile phone. It's a smart Android phone. But you have you know, people who aren't used to credit and cash now swiping on a device that intelligently has to go and do a check against these type of systems. Am I delivering the cylinder to the right person? This is an online check that can't be done here in the US today, but it's being done in India. Am I actually pulling the right list? Is it the right cylinder? Am I collecting the cash? And then you're doing a real-time deposit uh, you know, from the person with, using all these digital instruments. And these are digital instruments that are exploding now. So there's 100 million wallets. Paytm alone has 100 million wallets. When the, US, uh, when the Prime Minister launched uh, his initiative over a year ago, India uh, opened up 200 million bank accounts in six months. There's 600 million plus cards in this country. The scale of, of which India is going to change um, is going to have two things. It's going to be a very India-centric hybrid model where you have to understand these use cases, work with Hindustan Petroleum and India and oil and understand how these things actually work, and leverage technology to solve it in a streamlined way. But um, that scale is multiple times bigger than the US. Thanks, Bobby. So actually, just to give a sense of scale, right, we now have about five to 600 million bank accounts. Um, you know, that can be, you can be very cynical about whether well, all these being used or not, but at any scale, the number of unique bank account holders in India is greater than the US population. We have a billion cell phones, and now we have a billion people with Aadhaar, right, with a unique ID. So that's the level of, you know, connectedness that we are having here and, you know, digitization that's happening. Uh, I personally believe, you know, with the, something like India Stack and what's happening here in India, we are going to see things develop in, in the country which, you know, have not been seen in this part of the world. And, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's leapfrog, you know, or, you know in, in, in more manners than you will think. I'll just close with one example of, you know, iris cameras, right? So iris-based authentication is a very high fidelity authentication. Iris cameras, when I was working on the Aadhaar program six years ago when we started, were costing two and a half thousand dollars. Today there are companies, and there's one Bay Area company here specifically, that has got technology that only requires an off-the-shelf IR camera to be in a cell phone. A bill of materials is less than three dollars, and it turns a cell phone into a high-fidelity iris camera. Combine that with the entire authentication that you've got, and that's why we went with this R-Glass architecture. Suddenly we've turned you know, really high-fidelity authentication into commodity. So uh, that's a lot of what's happening here in India. I just see that we're almost out of time. Uh, we'll probably take a couple more questions from the audience. We are a mobile payment startup here in the Silicon Valley. So we, sh we issue a public key certificate to all the smartphone holders so that mm -hmm. you could use your smartphone as an authentication device to make a payment on in any device in any channel and anywhere. So, so our solution is inherently a two-factor authentication solution. We have been a public key or a private key? Private key, public key combination. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so a unique pair for each. Yeah. Okay. So we have um, we have been totally focused on United States, but then the last two months we got calls from Uber, Snapdeal, and uh, India Mart. Um, so question is, uh, our solution? They lo love our solution. But unfortunately, RBI requires the second authentication done, in my words, in primitive manner. SMS, you type it in, then you verify it. So do you think, uh, do you see it changing soon so that our solution could be, uh, or our value of the, our, um, our yeah. solutions, so benefits could be totally I'll, I'll just quickly realized. answer that question. Yeah. Uh, so just to clarify, RBI does not require any second factor authentication to be done in a particular way. RBI has only told all the banks, verify one piece of data that is not printed on the cards. So your problem is not with RBI, it's with the banks, right? How they have implemented so that second factor authentication. Yeah. But that battle can only be won by working with the banking system okay. and with potentially Visa and MasterCard. Um, because they implemented this, you know, seven years ago when SMS-based OTP was the best thing that they could do at the time. Okay. Uh, but it's not a regulator problem, it's an implementation of that. Got it. So, but issue. do you see it changing soon? Well, you're going to have to come to India with your solution and, you know, okay. uh, bang on the doors of all the banks and convince them. Oh, uh, that's very hard. That's the challenge and opportunity for a startup. Hi, um, my name is Chandan. I'm working on a startup uh, which is organizing actually India's uh, public data. And uh, you talked about uh, India becoming f 
fintech yeah. data poor from fintech data rich. No, no, just data rich. Uh, yeah, so one, one hurdle we have faced is like getting access to the financial data. Uh, is there some tips or directions you can give to startups who want to uh, tap into this financial data? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll let people from the panel answer. Yeah, I, I, so I guess, which kind of data are you looking for? Uh, just uh, people's, uh, you know, sort of like financial history, maybe anonymized and things like that, and it's okay to pay for it and all that stuff. Yeah. So, you know, wait a few months, we'll have the consent framework in place. You can ask people for their permission and then use the data. This is the right way to do it. There are a lot of Jugard ways that are possible today, but we can take that offline. I think we're completely out of time, uh, so I'm just going to unfortunately wrap up because I've just been getting... Uh, can I here. ask one question, please? I'm sorry, we're out of time, but we'll all be available offline. Uh, Sanjay, Thanks. just one thing I would like to leave uh, you and the audience with. One of the things you had asked, which I thought will be very useful for the people who are already uh, interested in India Fintech, is the current landscape of uh, Indian players. So what we have put together is a landscape of Indian players in fintech space. So if any of you is interested, please uh, stop by. You know, so let me do this, uh, Puneet. I will take that from you and I will tweet it, okay? Uh, so, you know, it'll be on, on the internet and I assume it's public data. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Perfect. So, you know, I think the takeaways here, we, we're completely out of time. You know, fintech in India is booming. There are going to be a lot of things relevant from here that you can bring to India, but a lot of unique things about India, you can't just take something from here and, and bring it in India. I think that was also the point Namneet was making. A uh, lot of exciting solutions coming out in the market, a lot of capital available, you know, you know I, I, there's seed stage capital, there's late stage capital available. Uh, and I think if you're ignoring it, you're missing a big opportunity. So I hope to see all of you in India with great solutions. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Guys.